So in part two, we're going to set up the UCS manager to configure our ports uh, towards our Nexus switch, towards our UCS, and of course, towards our uh, setting for our storage. So that's what our diagram looks like for the lab. The first two ports that we have on our Fabric Interconnect going down towards the UCS, those will be found on port 1 and 2. Going up towards the Nexus, we're going to be looking at ports 19 and 20. And um, to, in order to connect to our storage for our sand based solution, we're going to be looking at uh, port number 31. So we're going to set those ports up now. To start off, you open up a browser, connect to the IP address of your cluster. Ours was uh, 10.100 when we set that up. Say that we want to launch the uh, UCS manager. Wait for the Java plugins to download. And log in with the username and password that we created during the setup of the cluster. And there is our UCS manager. So initially you'll see obviously a couple of warnings. We don't have a whole bunch working yet. There hasn't been too much that's been configured. So what we're going to see underneath our equipment tab, first of all, chassis, you'll notice that there's nothing here. I can't select anything. There, there's no plus button to expand. That's because our ports aren't configured. So we're going to expand our fabric interconnects. We're going to start on our B side, so our subordinates. From there, we're going to go into our fixed module. There you can see what our physical infrastructure looks like and we're going to go and change the actual port configuration of our devices um, to go and set them up for fabric um, fabric connections. We're going to be setting up the, the options to be able to configure our Ethernet ports, etc. So if we select on the, the main session there of the Fabric Interconnect, go and select the Configure Unified Ports. Gives us a warning that we're going to have to reboot if we go and do this shows us the ports that we currently have and we want to go and configure the last eight so there you can see it selected four for us move the slider over again we're going to have the last eight ports that are now going to be configured if you sl uh, scroll down to the bottom over here you'll see that these are now going to be um, fiber channel so we're setting these up to be our fiber channel ports we don't actually need all of them but uh, i'm going to allocate eight on both sides as soon as we've done that we say we're done by the way, if you did have an expansion module inside here, you could configure that by selecting the button down there. Um, we don't. So we say finish. It tells us, by the way, this is just going to cause an immediate reboot. I'm aware of that, so I'm going to say that's not a problem and select yes. Now that those have been configured for um, fiber channel interfaces, we then need to hop onto the A side. We want to do the exact same thing on the A side as well. So on the A side, go and select configure unified ports. Reminds us about the fact we're going to have to reboot. Move our slider to select the eight ports. That's too many. It's not playing the game today. There we go. And finish again. That will take a little bit of time to do a reboot. These things do take anywhere between about seven and 10 minutes for them to actually finish the reboot. Um, if I left the screen open, you'd see I'd, I'd get an error message telling me that I've lost connectivity and I've lost connection. There it is immediately. And uh, we'll just wait for this to obviously finish doing the reboot and then uh, restart from there. So uh, I'll, I'll pause and we'll begin again now. About 10 minutes later, our reboots have completed and uh, I've re-logged back in into the UCS manager. If I expand up my fabric interconnects now, let's have a look at the, the A side first of all. Now you'll see that there's Ethernet ports as well as our um, fiber channel ports as well. If we expand fiber channel, there are the ones that we had set up. So we'd chosen the last eight and um, they're now visible from the A side. If we go and expand the B side, we should see the same thing as well. We have Ethernet ports, we have our fiber channel ports as well. So what we want to dive into at this point is expanding up our Ethernet ports. We want to go into port one and port two. Now these two ports are the ones that are going towards the UCS. So they're going to be running the actual chassis itself. And uh, the first thing we want to do from here is if you look at port number one, you'll notice the status is everything is down, etc. We're going to say we want to reconfigure the port 
and because this is going towards the server we want to configure that as a server port it asks us to confirm we say yes we give it a little bit of time you'll notice the green light appears here on the top right of the screen and the overall status then transitions into an up phase as well once that's been done do the exact same thing for port 2 and we're going to do this four times so we're obviously going to set it up um, on port 1 and 2 on the B side we're going to set up the A side to do the exact same thing as well give it a moment for it to adjust identify if the interface is up that's fantastic two green lights on the first two interfaces that we've now got configured over there uh, go on to the A side expand open the Ethernet ports we're going to do the same thing here on port 1 and port 2 reconfigure server port state goes into enabled admin goes into upstate everything is now good we've got the green light appearing on the side go to port 2 server port yes wait for that to confirm now at this moment in time what what should be happening is the the, the fabric interconnects should be able to identify that there is now a chassis however we have multiple cables going down there so one of the first things we want to do is just quickly scroll up now next to our chassis tab if we expand that suddenly we've identified a chassis so it's been able to do that discovery and, and pick up that a chassis now exists and that it's now been able to create that interconnect. It also shows us that we're running the B series, so the 5108. From here, what I want to do though is on the chassis, I want to go to the connectivity policy. And because I'm running multiple cables down to the device, I want to change the way that it's going to do the discovery to specify, please identify it through a port channel environment. I want to do that on both sides of the solution. Hit the save changes button. acknowledge that I'm happy with what I've uh, what I've done and what I wish it to do and we've now gone and configured it up to have the new chassis discovery policy which is now going to be based on port channel based environment the next thing that we want to have a look at is jumping back onto our CLI from our devices and then you can obviously see the last reboot that took place um, if we log in here this can take a little bit of time for it to finish identifying and making sure that everything works but if you remember early on when we did a show cluster this was in part one we would have done this in a show cluster state we were receiving an error message about the HA Ah, now all of a sudden that error message is changing. This can take anywhere between 30 seconds to a minute before it changes. Um, and if we keep on refreshing, we'll eventually hopefully see it coming up as showing a HA ready status. This can take a little bit of time, so we'll keep on refreshing until it does change. I've left it alone for about two minutes. Obviously, you haven't witnessed that during the video. You'll notice that uh, now if I go and type the command again, it's showing HA ready. Uh, prior to that, I was receiving a not ready status. I was receiving a downgrade status. As mentioned, it does take a little bit of time. I left it for about two minutes, but now if I say show cluster state, it now shows up that we're in an HA ready state. So finally, we've got our cluster completely identified. It's picked up our chassis and um, everything is ready for the high availability as well. So moving into our next cabling uh, structures, we need to have a look at our uplinks. So those are going to be on port 19 and 20. So again, if we just bring up the diagram real quick, we've set up ports 1 and 2, which go towards the UCS uh, chassis that we've done the same on both sides, the A and the B. Now we want to set up the ports that go up to the nexus. Those are found on port 19 and 20 on both sides. So similar sort of process on how we go about uh, doing the configuration for this. We're going to scroll down to our, we're on the fabric B at this point, go down to port number 19, from there we want to do a reconfiguration we're going to set this up as an uplink port give it a moment for it to be able to identify the link you'll see the light goes green our status is now going to an up we're going to do the same thing for port number 20 and we're going to do the same thing on the A side as well Twenty is up. A side, we do the same thing. Green light for nineteen, and finally on port number twenty is our last port for the uplinks. Great, and that port is now up as well. So all four ports showing an up state at this moment in time. 
So much like we told chassis discovery to look at the port channel because we have two cables, we want to do the same thing for the uplink, but it's not a chassis discovery thing this time. It is now a regular port channel that we want to configure. It is based on LAN, so it is Ethernet channel or Ether ports that we've been using. So if we go underneath our LAN table at the top, from there underneath our LAN cloud, we're going to expand underneath fabric A and B. We'll do this on both sides as well. From here, we've got port channels. From port channels, we're going to right click on it say that we'd like to create a port channel, asks us for an identification number, one is fine. What name would you like to call it? I'm gonna call it PO1 in this case. Select next. Ask me which ports I'd like to add to that ether channel. I'm gonna choose number 19, shift it across, select number 20, shift it across, finish. And my port channel now exists. So port channel is being configured and we are seeing it identified as a link up status at this moment in time. While we're waiting for the refreshes to take place on that, let's jump into the fabric B side, go into the port channels. The exact same concept here as well. We're going to say create port channel. Same name, same structure, select port number 19, support, uh, select port number 20. expand and confirm that we've got our port channel in existence. Let's go and have a look at our port channel one and our fabric again on fabric A side. If we go and select it now, it's had a bit of time to stabilize and negotiate. If we go and select it, you'll see the operational state is now up. It's not complaining about no members part of it. You also see the operational speed is at 20 gigabits per second. There is uh, two cables running at 10 gig each. So once you add those up together, we've got the, the 20 gig all in all. If we go have a look at our B side, that should now hopefully be showing us the same thing. It's not yet. We'll, you know, a few moments, it'll it'll go. And, there we go. It's starting to come through. So like I said, it, it does take a little bit of time for it to pick that up. It's now showing an up status. Again, we're seeing 20 gigabits bits per second on that port as well. So the last thing we need to configure for our port structure is our connectivity to our storage environment, which is a SAN based connection. So from our SAN tab, we'll open that up. From there, we're underneath our SAN cloud. You can change the filter as well. It's right at the top, so I don't feel the need to do that at that point. Select the vSANs. From vSANs, I'm going to right click on it, specify I'd like to create a new vSAN solution. At this point, I need to go and define a name first that I wish to know it by or uh, give it a value. I'm going to call this vSAN 11. I don't wish to do zoning. I wish this to apply to fabric A. It asks me what the vSAN ID is going to be. Um, our uh, fiber channel switch has already been configured, so it's, it's vSAN 11 that we want to configure it in. And for FCOE, it's going to be 1011. Once I've selected that, I go and create that vSAN. I'm going to repeat the process, create a second vSAN. This one's going to be called vSAN 12. It's going to belong to fabric B. It is going to be in vSAN 12. It's going to belong to uh, FCOE 1012. And our two vSANs have been created. We need to go and allocate them to the ports that go towards our storage environment. So to do that, we need to go back to our equipment tab. From there, we're not dealing with the Ethernet ports anymore, so we can um, minimize that tree. We'll minimize the one for our Fabric B. Let's expand our, our FC ports. It is port 31 that goes to our storage, so we will select port 31 from the list. On the right-hand side, it's asking us what vSAN information. It's default to vSAN 1. We don't want to be in there. We want to want to move that. So our B side, as we had allocated for 12, we will select 12 from the list. Select to save the changes. port has been modified and as soon as we are in the correct vSAN you'll notice the interface now goes green. So interface, my mouse is now hovering over, there we go, it's green. We want to do the exact same thing on the A side as well, we're going to expand up our FC ports, we're going to go to port 31 and we're only using the one port for the, for the storage uplinks. From there if we're going to choose our vSAN you'll notice 11 is available for us. Select the save changes button. confirm and wait to make sure that the light is green, which it now is. Overall operational status is currently set to up, admin is enabled state, and our light is obviously green for our port. So the very last thing we need to do is give our um, servers IP addresses, management IP addresses, for them to be able to 
be connected to and managed. So from our LAN tab, we're going to expand that open. Um, you can go and apply a filter to this if you you know want to be able to find things a little bit quicker. What we're looking for from that is we're looking for pools. Inside the pools, we're going to expand our IP pools tab. It is extension management or EXT management that we're looking at. What we want to do is create a new block of addresses. So we're going to say create a new block of IPs. The IP addresses that we're going to allocate to each of the server blades is 192.168.10. We're going to start the addresses at 141. Um, on the right hand side here, you'll see it says, how many of these do you want? I'd like to make eight. We have eight server blades inside that chassis. Uh, it's going to prompt us for what is our default gateway for each of those servers, which is 10.254. Uh, we don't require DNS settings at this moment. Our subnet mask is default and correct at that point. Select OK. It creates the block of addresses for you. Once that has been done, if we have a quick expansion, have a look at the ports themselves, you can see our ranges from our extension management. We can see our IP address blocks. What's interesting to note here is there are the addresses that have now been assigned, the, the eight sequential IP addresses, subnet mask, default gateway, and the fact it has been assigned to one of our server blades. If we open this up just a little bit wider, you'll notice it shows us which blade has currently got it. The, it is a totally random formula that it uses for giving out IP addresses. So there is no relation with, you know, blade one gets the first IP address. That doesn't exist. So you'll see here it, it's it's chassis one, blade two, then it's blade eight, blade seven, five. So it's a total random environment as to which IP address got given uh, from the block of addresses that we've gone and configured. So that is our entire setup. So that was showing you in part one, we had a look at how to set up the fabric interconnects. In part two, we went through the entire phase of setting up all the different ports for our connections. We set up port one and two as server ports towards the, the chassis. We did the same on the B side. We set up port 19 and 20 to go up to the Nexus. Um, and we, we set that up as a, a port channel between the two. Through chassis discovery, we obviously set that up as a port channel. We identified that the high availability is now available between the fabric interconnects. And we set up our FC port, port 31, to now connect uh, two different vSANs. So vSAN 11 on the left-hand side, vSAN 12 on the right-hand side. So that is it. Our lab is now ready for action. We're, in, we're ready to proceed with the rest of the configuration um, of our UCS and our fabric interconnects.